millions of people in the world today. And God knows each one of them. He knows you. In fact, He uniquely designed you with a specific blueprint for your life. Today on Living Strong, discover that God has uniquely designed you for a specific purpose and begin this exciting journey of fulfilling God's purpose for your life. to describe what my life used to be of someone who's always been unable to see though I wasn't unhappy or better that way but everything's changed since I met him that day I was down by the corner just passing the time Sitting in the sunlight and feeling it shine When the sounds of a crowd begin to grow in my ears So I waited and I listened as I heard them draw near Then a man stepped up to me and spat on the ground Put the mud on my eyes and smeared it around Send me off to Shalom to wash off the clay And I opened my eyes and I looked at the day And I have no idea how he did it But I just know what happened to me Yesterday I was in darkness Since I met him I can see heard it, they put me on trial, even called in my parents and grilled them a while. When at the end I defended the man who opened my eyes and all the trouble began. Just said, ever since the beginning of time, no one's opened the eyes of someone born blind. This man sent from God just can't be denied. And they cursed me and dragged me and threw me outside. How he found me, but I know he was talking to me. It was easy to tell by the sound of his voice, he was the reason I see. As soon as he spoke to me, I couldn't hide the emotions that welled up from deep down inside. When combined with the dreams that he made to come true, to kneel there and worship was all I could do. For everything he's done for me Yesterday I was in darkness Since I met him I can see And I called him my Lord and my Savior For everything he's done for me Yesterday I was in darkness But since I met him Since I met him since I met him, I can see Since I met him, Messiah Since I met him, Messiah Since I met him, I can see It's our joy to study God's Word and uh, explore the deep things that God has for us in His Word. And uh, one, of our, uh, one of my favorite subjects to share God's Word on, teach God's Word on, uh, is a very simple but very, yet very important thing that all of us need to understand. 
And it is that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And how do we go about discovering that plan and discovering that purpose in our lives? And what does it take for us to fulfill? See that plan of God fulfilled in our lives. So the next several weeks, we're going to be studying God's Word together on fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And we need to begin, first of all, by understanding or just recognizing this fact in our hearts that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. And that's what we want to establish in our session today. That God has a plan, God has a purpose for you as an individual. There are places that God wants you to go. There are people that God wants you to meet. There are lives that God wants you to touch and things that God wants you to do. Things that He has planned for you to accomplish here on earth. And we can say with, that, with, with, with extreme confidence that there is no greater satisfaction in life than living for the plan and the purpose that God has for us. There is no greater joy than seeing the fulfillment of the dream that He's given to you. And in fact, there is no greater adventure to journey on than journeying into the plan and purpose that God has for us. We want to begin, first of all, by re understanding that God has a purpose for our lives. God is a God of plan, of purpose, and of design. The God of the Bible, the God that we serve, He is a God of plan. He is a God of purpose. He doesn't do things arbitrarily, randomly, you know, just wake up one morning and say, okay, let me figure out what am I going to do today. That's not the way God works. But God is a God of plan. He's a God of purpose. He is a God of design. The Bible tells us in Psalm 33, verse 11, The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of His heart to all generations. Notice what it says, the plans of His heart for all generations. God's got a plan, and He's got it for all generations. He's planned things ahead of time. Acts 15 and verse 18 tells us, Known to God from eternity are all His works. God knows His plans, the things that He's going to do, even well before time. Isaiah 46 and verse 10, the Bible teaches us that God declares the end from the beginning. He knows the destination at the beginning, at the start of the journey. He declares the end from the beginning. Now, what we must understand is that God has what we can call as a general purpose, and He also has a specific purpose. The general purpose of God applies to mankind as a whole, applies to all of God's creation. It applies to humanity, people in this world. That's the general purpose of God. The general purpose of God will be executed, will be fulfilled. Regardless of what you and I do, God will fulfill His overall plan and purpose that He has for man. And then on the other hand, there is also a specific purpose. A purpose that God has for each individual, for you as an individual. There are things that God has planned for you, ordained for your life. Let's talk about the general purpose of God. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 9, for instance, the Bible tells us that He has made known or revealed to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Himself. There is a purpose that He has purposed in Himself. Ephesians 3 verse 11 tells us that according to the eternal purpose which He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is an eternal purpose which God executed and continues to carry out in and through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an eternal purpose. It's the overall general purpose of God. 
And that will be fulfilled regardless of what you and I have to say. But then there is a specific purpose that God has for you and me as an individual. Things that He designed you to fulfill in your journey here on earth. The psalmist said in Psalm 139 and verse 16, he said, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. In your book, the psalmist says, all my days were written, even before I experienced my first day on earth. In your book, all my days were written. God wrote out. God had a blueprint for your life, a plan that he had for you and me. Paul puts it this way in Philippians 3 and verse 12. He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid a hold of me. What is Paul saying? He's saying, I am moving forward in life in order to lay a hold of that for which, meaning the purpose for which Jesus laid a hold of me. So Paul was not living a meaningless existence or a random existence. Instead, his life was filled with purpose. He was pursuing that for which Jesus had laid a hold of him. When the Lord Jesus touched your life and mine, there was a that for which that he had in mind for you and me. And our goal must be to pursue that, to go after that for which, for which Jesus has laid a hold of us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 brings this out very clearly. It says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Notice what it says. There are good works which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in it. God had things already in His mind for your life so that you and I can just walk in those things that He had planned ahead of time for us. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 9 teaches us that He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our own works, but according to His own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So God saved us and He called us to His own calling, not based on our good works or our achievements in life, But He called us according to His own purpose and grace, which were given to us in Jesus Christ. Notice the words purpose and grace. God called you for His purpose, and for that purpose, He has released grace into your life. You already have the grace that you need to fulfill the purpose for which He has called you. And purpose and grace have been given to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. The unveiling of God's plan and purpose for our life is progressive. It's very rare that you would find someone who says, you know, I just know everything. In fact, we wouldn't find somebody who says, I know everything that God has for my life. Rather, we journey into it. Proverbs 4 and verse 18 tells us that like the sun that rises up and shines bright at noonday, so is the path of the righteous. It gets brighter and brighter until the noonday. So the unveiling of God's plan, the unveiling of God's purpose for our lives is progressive. We understand it a step at a time as we journey with God to fulfilling His plan and His purpose. And we'd like to use the term life dream for this purpose that God has for your life. We'd like to encourage each one of us to get an understanding, a sense of this life dream. You may not know all the details, but you begin to capture, get a sense of this is what God has called me to do. And when you get a sense and understanding of the purpose and the grace that are in you, 
because you're in Jesus Christ. You get a sense of God's life dream for you. This is what He created me for. This is what I'm designed to do in life. And then you begin to follow with God into, the, into seeing that life dream fulfilled. A couple of other things that we must understand uh, as we talk about the fact that God has a purpose for our lives is to recognize that God's plan for our life is always good. You know, when we talk about following God's plan and God's will, some people automatically get very scared. They think, you know, oh no, this means I can't do what I want to do. I've got to follow somebody else's plan for my life. I've got to follow God's will for my life. And many of us have the wrong idea, or the wrong uh, notion that God's will is something that is, is not very easy for our lives. But get this clear in your heart, in our hearts, that God's plan for us is always good. Jeremiah 29, 11, God speaks to His people in captivity and He says, I know the thoughts I'm thinking towards you. These are thoughts of peace to, and not evil to give you a future and a hope. God is telling His people, I have a plan to give you a hope and a future. I have My thoughts for you are thoughts of peace, good thoughts. That's what I have in mind for you. And as much as we recognize that God's plan for us is always good, we must also understand that we need to cooperate with God to fulfill His plan. God reveals His plan to us a step at a time, but we need to walk with Him, cooperate with Him, take steps with Him in order to see His plan fulfilled in our lives. We'd like to share with you the story of one of our own young men and his testimony of how he journeyed with God to discover the plan that God had for his life, God has for his life, and right now he's in the middle of it, seeing that dream being fulfilled. And here's his story. I'm Naveen, I've played guitar for a while now, and I'm just basically going to share a little bit about my story about how I moved from technically being the, the donkey of the family to being a musician. I was the one kid in the family who never had a musical streak at all. The constant cry in my life was, like, was saying, God, can I, I'd really like to play music, but I have no way to be able to play my music because I never had my own guitar, I never had any musical equipment. When I joined college, I joined college a year late, and I was really upset because I'd, a lot of my friends were already in college and I spent a year out of college. After passing through college, I realized that if I had joined college a year earlier, I would not have been able to play music. So there was, there was a plan with which I was taken into college one year later. I really believe that's really God opening platforms for you that you cannot do by yourself. A Gibson endorsement is not one of the easiest things to get and I still don't know how I got it. I just get a call from somebody from Gibson saying, hey Naveen, uh, we're, we're tying up with artists in the country and we would like you to come on board as, as one of the endorsees for the brand in the country, in India. Gibson deal was the biggest thing that could ever happen to me. The next thing I know is God brings across a TC Electronics deal. I think I'm the only Asian with a contract from TC Electronics in Denmark. And, and I have an endorsement deal that got signed up with them and I still don't know how. If I ever have to, to press my story to anybody, I will say I'm not the best guitarist in the world, but I'm definitely the most blessed guitarist in the world. And be, coming from where I came from, uh, if God can use the donkey to, to do stuff in music and, and really get to some place, um, and he could take the little donkey and transform him into a musician, he can do anything for anybody. So that was a story of Naveen, Naveen's story, where he shared how God directed him and and, and led him into what he had planned for his life. And, and today, as we see Naveen, his life is something that celebrates the dream of God. It's seeing the unfolding of God's dream and purpose for his life. And like Naveen, each one of us must journey into discovering and pursuing God's plan for our lives. There are ways by which we can discover the purpose and the plan of God for our lives. And, and we will be covering that as we continue uh, in these sessions. 
in discovering the plan and purpose of God. There are several different ways that we will talk about uh, uh, and how to discover the purpose and the plan of God. As we journey in our study, another very important thing that we will be talking about is the fact that God will prepare you to fulfill His plan and purpose. God has a plan, a purpose for you as an individual, for me as an individual. But He prepares us a step at a time. The mistake we make is once we get a sense of what God wants us to do, we just step out and think we are ready for it. And maybe not. Maybe you are not ready. In fact, many of us are not ready. We need to get prepared to step into that dream and that the ultimate plan that God has for us. And so we journey with God through a preparation process before He can release us into seeing that plan fulfilled. The greater the call that God has for you and me, the greater will be the preparation that He takes us through. You know, as we journey with God into seeing His plan, into seeing His purpose fulfilled, the reality is we will all make mistakes. I don't think there would be any one of us who would say, you know, I've journeyed with God absolutely perfectly. Every step He told me I took, everywhere He told me I went. I, I never made a mistake. I never took a detour. I never, went up, I never went off in the wrong direction. I don't think there will be any one of us who would ever be able to say that. The reality is we would make many mistakes in our journey into the plan and purpose of God. Sometimes it could be uh, unintentional. Unintentional, we just didn't know we were making a mistake, and sometimes it could just be that we were rebellious and just didn't want what God was directing us into, and so we chose our own way until we, you know, came to a point when we said, Okay, God, I give up, I'm coming back into your plan. Whatever might be the case, whether it was intentional or unintentional, whether it was our own doing or whether, whether it was somebody else's doing in our lives, we must understand that although we may make mistakes, in our journey into God's plan and purpose, God can always help us overcome our failures and help us complete His call. God is greater than our mistakes. That's why He's God. God is greater than time. He lives outside time. So He has the supernatural ability to compress in a short period of time, which humanly speaking, may have taken much longer. So, while this is not an encouragement for us to commit mistakes or to be careless in our journey, this is intended to help us realize that regardless of what happens, God can restore and God can take us eventually into the fulfilling of His plan and purpose. And of course, we also realize that there is an enemy Satan will do his best to stop us from fulfilling God's plan for our lives. He will hinder us. He will throw obstacles, put some roadblocks and opposition, some temptations that, that cause us to take detours. Satan is an enemy that wants to disturb the purpose of God for our lives. He's not going to just leave us alone. Sometimes the obstacles that Satan puts in our lives may cause delays. You're expecting things to happen in a month. It might happen several months later. In a year, several years later, there will be delays. Some of these delays are because of demonic opposition. Some of these delays are just God letting us go through a time of preparation to build certain things in our lives. And, and we must understand that if we can react and respond to delays in a proper way, God will still take us through and we will see the fulfillment of God's purpose. The dangers of delay is that delay, delays tend to weaken our desire. They may tend to weaken our determination. They may tend to weaken our drive. They may tend to create distractions. And hence, it's so important for us to remain focused on that dream that God gave you. To remain focused on the plan that God's unveiling to you. We must have endurance to fulfill the plan of God for our lives. Endurance will help us keep pressing through every obstacle, keep pressing through every season of delay, and take us into the fulfillment of God's plan for our lives. 
So what I want to encourage each one of us here this morning is that God has a plan for your life. I want to challenge you to live for that plan. Discover God's plan and God's dream. Today's teaching is an excerpt from the free publication called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download this free publication for your personal study from our church website, www.apcwo.org or request a free printed copy by sending an email to tv at apcwo.org. Our website also has several other free resources, including MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and other free publications that you can download and use. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's our pleasure to come and share God's Word with you. I want to encourage you to contact us, email us, our request for the free publication that is offered to you. It'll be a great resource to help you grow in your uh, faith and in the, in the things that we are studying today. I just want to pray with you before we close and end this program. And if you're right where you are, if you just bow your head with me uh, and let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you for those who've heard this message and watched this program today. And I pray, God, that by your Spirit, a, a, a deep sense of divine purpose will grip every heart, that they will know that you have designed them for a purpose, and they will begin this journey with you, Lord, to discover the purpose for which you've made them, and they will experience the joy of fulfilling it. I release your grace and your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Living Strong. Do join us again next week.